Osseo. Osseo. You know me, I'm nature's son, tracking the fat, left the thumb done. My theme today is return, and we do have Jim Ferris here who has returned to signify my theme. Return in a phrase in Arabic, ta'wil, to return something to its source, to its original ground. We'll see how that goes here. Uh, back in the 19th century, also called a century of dishonor, the War Department and the United States Army saw itself as the righteous herbicide in the service of progress. And the Indians were then the weeds. Furthermore, the Pedroids' uh, of use of the words of primitive and savage supplied the rationalization that deprived people of their human qualities. A touchstone of the aforesaid was also the military's persecution of a Turkic-speaking folk living in Arizona, whom the military branded Apaches. The word Apaches is Arga, for criminal, in lingo franci. And along with that were individuals, Geranimo and Chief Mangus Colorados of the Bedon Cohe people like that. In his biography, Geranimo has said, the murder of Mangus Colorados was perhaps the greatest wrong done to the American Indian. What he's referring to is Chief Mangus Colorados. He was an imposing figure, six to seven feet tall, truly a wise man, perhaps even a holy man. And that he, by himself, his own initiative, walked into an army post commanded by General West. Uh, he was unarmed and he was seized by the soldiers, tortured and beheaded. His head was then sent to the Smithsonian Institute where it languished along with all of the other severed heads of our Native American leaders. There it languished until Congress passed a law of reappropriation and his head was returned to his family in New Mexico. <laughs> and this portrait I have here, this memorial portrait, Oweke Sue Itoapi, is this <laughs> that the uh, artist has made, that I've inherited this uh, wonderful portrait of Mangos Colorados. The name Mangos Colorados is the Spanish name for red sleeves. <clears throat> Mangus dyed his cotton tunics red with a dye of rubicaceous plant that is also found in eastern Afghanistan where these people have come from and also found in the mountains of Arizona and that that was the way the Mexicans identified him like Geronimo which is the Spanish name for Ipris Hermonimus mean Saint Jerome whose name actually means you know uh, saint of the Holy Name. So you see where those names are, are coming from. Uh, here, this, this is a commemorative. His head has been returned. He, uh, his spirit will say, cannot finish, he can't finish himself until his body is all together the way he lived in that way. <clears throat> and the artist here, very interestingly, has made his turban. These people were turbans. That's what's called tuban, like that. And he's painted it red so that we would be signified of who he is. And he's cleverly disguised, you know, the severance of the head there. The artist has also added uh, an eagle feather to the turban, perhaps as an added blessing, but I will say uh, these people have nothing to do with feathers and eagles at all. <clears throat> this is another culture of people entirely that are being mistaken for something else. <laughs> So, uh, all of this is a portrait here of this. And all of this to know, because I'm going to read this poem from Mary Oliver, why it was necessary for me to, to tell you all of this. Um, the, the return in, in this language, meaning they returned it. So her title for her poem, The Return, 
is for Mangus Colorados. The deed took all my heart. I did not think of you, not till the thing was done. I put my sword away, and then no more the cold and perfect fury ran along my narrow bones. And then no more the black and dripping corridors held anywhere the shape that I had come to slay. Then for the first time I saw in the cave's belly the dark and clotted webs, the green and sucking pools, the rank and crumbling walls, the maze of passages. And I thought then of the far earth, of the spring sun, and the slow wind, and a young girl. And I looked then at the white thread. Hunting the Minotaur, I was no common man, and I had no need of love. I trailed the shining thread behind me for a vow, and did not think of you. It lay there like a sign, coiled on the bull's great hoof. And back into the world, half blind with weariness, I touched the thread and wept. Oh, it was as frail as air. And I turned then with the white spool through the cold rocks, through the black rocks, through the long webs, and the mist fell, and the webs clung, and the rocks tumbled, and the earth shook, and the thread held, and my wounds leap with impatience. Yet I turn back to sort the weeping ruins of my house, here or nowhere. I will make peace <clears throat> with the fact. Mm. Oh. Elsewhere, she wrote, the white thread is the symbol of purity and innocence. <laughs>